Hello, good morning. <laughs> big round of applause for yourselves for being here because everyone else is sleeping. There was a big party last night. So thank you for being here and thank you for investing in yourself and in, in your knowledge. I've been a seminar organizer for years and I find that those people who show up, those who have always showed up at the events and on time are the ones that are the biggest ones now in business and they have the biggest brands. So, and also, attending a, an event is not only a chance to expand your knowledge and get access to new information, but also to build those amazing one-to-one -one connections, which is the most powerful way really to, to build your brand. And this is what I'm gonna talk about today. I'm gonna talk about personal branding, and how to build an influential brand in today's market. And because you made it here on time, I'm gonna give you 100%, and I hope I will make this very interesting for you and trigger something in you to take some kind of different action in the next one to five years that will help you to stand out in this new economy. So. Thank you for being here, and people connect to people, not companies, right? We've all been through this pandemic. It's actually my first time on stage after the pandemic. I'm used to just staring on a lens for two and a half years, and it's very exciting to come here and, let's say, warm up for being on stage. And people connect to people, not companies, so we need this connection, this personal connection. And when you make that powerful personal connection, that's when big business happens. And when you build the brand that I'm gonna talk about today, connections become even more powerful and easier. You become influential and you attract the right people to you. So the state of the market today, we have a lot of noise, right? It's too much noise on social media. I have been on social media before, oh sorry, I've been doing PR and marketing before the internet. Anyone over 40 here? Anyone? I know you are over 40, Raisin. <laughs> so, so, you know, it was like really good times. And then when Facebook came, it was so exciting. We would place an ad and I would get an event with 500 people with like nothing, no budget. And now it's so much noise on social media. The competitors are becoming savvier as well. Your competitors about how to promote their business online, how to market their business online. So how do you stand out in this new market? And then Everyone is talking about this recession, about cutting costs, about, um, let's say, lowering prices. But is there another way to stand out in this new economy without cutting costs, without lowering prices? Again, that's what I'm going to talk about today. And then AI. We have AI. If anyone has had an experience, a negative experience with AI, any Facebook advertisers here? Raise your hand. Yeah, you know that you know business is becoming a lot more impersonal and sometimes it's frustrating, right? And we're losing this personal human connection. And then most of what worked yesterday or three months ago or six months ago, it stops working. Um, all these, you know, fast uh, strategies for getting lots of followers and making sales and all these hacks, they just stop working after three to six months or a year. So is there a long-term strategy that works? I call this strategy ACT. Because the most valuable commodities today online are attention, connection, and trust. And when you have that, you have everything in the market for the long term, not just for the short term. It's not about short term um, impressionalism, like standing out in the short term. It's about creating this connection, this trust with your audience. So how do you get there? It's happening with my clicker. <laughs> OK. So how do you gain the attention, the connection, and trust? In summary, and what I'm going to talk about today, and I'm going to tell you how you're going to do it, is number one, lead with purpose, not with making money. We all want to make money, but when we lead with purpose, we attract the right people, we attract the right audience, so create a purpose-led brand. Number two is create real, emotional, human connections, which is what 
AI doesn't have and is what people are craving, right? And what we are all here to do. We are all so excited to come back after the pandemic and create these real human emotional connections. And you can do this online as well if you are skilled in these strategies. And then give value. Give valuable content. When you give value to people and when you show your knowledge, they reciprocate. And today, we are the media. People and companies are the media. Each and every one of us uh, can be their own media group. So as a media group, if you think about yourself as a media broadcasting, if you give valuable content, then you win the trust, you gain connection, you gain credibility. And then play the long game. Don't just jump on these short-term trends. Today, I'm going to talk about the long game. And you can win in the short and the long term with these strategies. So, how, so what I'm going to talk about today is how to attract ideal clients and opportunities to you on autopilot. Anyone would love that? To attract clients coming to you, asking to work with you, wanting to pay you, like, where do I pay? Like, please? <laughs> Don't lie. <laughs> By the way, how many people here are entrepreneurs already? They're running their own business? Raise your hand. Great. And how many of you are not entrepreneurs, but you would love to have, let's say, a location-independent business that you can run from anywhere? Yeah? It would be amazing, right? So I'm going to talk about one of the ways today. There are more ways, but with this way, you can win in every way. So. How to stand out as the go-to expert in the market and your business as the go-to business in the market. How to build a viable recession-proof brand for the long term. How to gain trust and credibility in the market and how to create a business that you can run from anywhere. And this is, again, one of the biggest assets you can have today. So a little bit about me. My name is Pavlina Babaluga. I am the island entrepreneur. I was born on this beautiful little island of Cyprus in the Mediterranean, which even though it's beautiful, it's very limiting for the people who grew up here, and especially if you want to start a business. You are not given any opportunities if you didn't belong in certain families or have connections with the government. So I was always feeling very limited, and I wanted to get out of the island. We also have this what I call the island mindset, this closed-minded thinking of, because I'm from a small island, I can go that far. And that was the case until a few years ago, when what happened? The internet came, right? But before the internet, because like I said, um, in a certain age group, I was around doing marketing before the internet, I decided to go work in the media. I have an MBA, but I was always fascinated by the media. And it was my dream job. And I managed to get my dream job in media groups. I was a public relations manager when I was very young in uh, two, the two biggest media groups in Cyprus and one media group in Greece, TV channels. And even though I got my dream job, anyone watch this movie, The Devil Wears Prada? Anyone? <laughs> yeah? So I was that girl. Uh, I really wanted to make it happen. I really tried hard, but I was going home every day crying, and in the beginning, I didn't know why. I didn't know why I was so miserable with that environment. It was horrific for me. I was too innocent for that world. And after changing three media groups and two different countries, um, learning all about the fakeness of it all and media control, I, I have had it. I was miserable. I really wanted to be an entrepreneur. So I started my own business. I got an office in the center of Nicosia. I was this entrepreneur. I even had a couch at the office. I was sleeping at the office sometimes, working day and night, hustling, running my PR agency, events management agency. And at the same time, I was teaching university students PR and marketing. And I was getting paid by the hour like peanuts to teach PR and media. And then, Something happened. Then the internet came. Yes, I had a business before the internet. The internet came, and I was like, oh my god. I, I don't have to depend on this media anymore. I don't have to be in the media. I can create my own media group. I can broadcast myself. I can grow my business online. I started reading all these books, getting inspired, attending seminars, and then 
I decided I wanted to bring this knowledge to people in my country, and I started flying big speakers from the US who had a different kind of knowledge uh, to run seminars and help people create this new mindset that it doesn't matter where you're from, where you live, you can create anything you want in life, really. If you just shift your mindset, the opportunities are there. So this is Dr. John Demartini. If anyone has watched this movie, The Secret, has anyone watched The Secret? Here, yes, Dr. John Demartini, one of my mentors, Bob Proctor again, one of the stars of The Secret. And these uh, speakers became my mentors. And what I realized was that they had built multi-million dollar education business around their personal brands, right? And they were selling online courses. Like speaking on stage is just a branding tool, really, for them. A branding tool for their business. That's what I realized. I started studying their systems and learning from them. And they were all telling me, Pavlina, you need to get on stage as well. But I wasn't this person. I was really shy. I didn't want to, like, I didn't think I could do it, right? And then 2013, boom. If anyone was here in Cyprus, it was really, really, really painful. Banks, the two biggest banks in Cyprus crashed. They took everyone's savings. Uh, the banks were closed for a week. We couldn't even get money out of the bank. And then people lost their money. I had to cancel seminars at the time and move them. And then that was when I made the decision that I cannot depend on one economy. I need to be online. Like I love doing the seminars, but I need to start thinking how to get online. And same year, anyone knows Gary Vaynerchuk? So same year, I was reading this book, Crush It, like for years before. So I knew this guy, Gary Vaynerchuk, and I asked his manager uh, for an interview. He was giving interviews. I saw on t Twitter he was giving interviews, and I got approved to interview Gary Vaynerchuk, little Bavlina from Cyprus. So when the manager said, you know, you, you got a spot for an interview, it was on my birthday, 2013 when the bank crash happened. And when I was talking to Gary, he said, Pavlina, Pavlina, you need to start creating content and build your brand, and you need to get on stage. And I was like, it's my birthday. I'm interviewing Gary Vaynerchuk. Maybe it's a sign. Maybe I should just stop hiding behind my business and start building my own personal brand and stop just making other people stars and start you know, believing a bit in myself and in my knowledge, right? So I started building my personal brand. I decided to take the advice of these people and stop hiding behind my business. So I want to show you a little bit what happens when you build your brand because I didn't know, right? I put my first video out. It took me a bit more thinking about it, <laughs> actually. But then I put my first video out September 2014. I started blogging. I got on stage at one of my seminars in 2015 as a speaker for the first time, and suddenly everyone wanted me to coach them. I wasn't even a coach at the time. I was a seminar organizer, but I told there was a full room of 300 people, and I said, if anyone wants coaching from me, uh, come and see me. And like, I was fully booked for six months because I gave them six months packages, and I didn't know what to do. I'm like, wow, okay. I just talked for an hour, and I had all these big American speakers, but people wanted to get coaching because I shared my story, and then my seminars kept getting bigger and bigger. And people were telling me, you know, Pavlina, we come to your seminars because of you, not these guys at your brain. We trust you. We like you. And then September 2016, I even launched my own um, online TV show at one of Cyprus's biggest media groups, uh, sigmalife.com. And actually, I was a peer manager in this media group before, and I was miserable. But then suddenly, I have my own uh, online TV show. Then I started speaking internationally. I went to Malaysia. I went to Singapore. Actually, this is my favorite shoe designer, Jimmy Chu. His team was at the seminar in Malaysia, and they came and said, you know, we're going for dinner with Dr. Jimmy. Would you like to come? I'm like, Jimmy Chu? He's Malaysian? Right, the Sex and the City guy with the, like, anyone knows Jimmy Choo? Yeah, so we had dinner with Jimmy Choo, and he's like the most humble guy ever. And he did it all by building his personal brand. He had a little shoe shop in, in London. The media discovered him. He built his personal brand. Prince, Princess Diana was doing her shoes. Vogue put him out there, and then he built a multi-million dollar business. And he said, always stay humble. Never stop learning. It's the key to success. And I was at dinner with him with the big speakers 
uh, two big speakers who were at the seminar. The other speaker was bigger than me. I was like the secondary speaker. And he was serving us. We went to this traditional um, uh, Malaysian restaurant, serving us the food, asking questions to learn. Speaking in the UK, Singapore, and then when I, what I realized when I met these people in other countries is that your ideal client is the same person everywhere. When you share your story online, it's the same people that I had in Cyprus. Uh, exactly the same people, but different culture, different country. So that's when it clicked, really. It's like, wow, I can put my knowledge online. People relate. They, they laugh at the same jokes. They need the same information. Everywhere in the world, everywhere I went, I noticed that people were the same. So I started creating my own courses, academy, doing more and more seminars, and during the pandemic, even live streaming seminars from a studio. So why I'm sharing my stories is, first of all, why listen to me? Second, what this has done for me specifically and what it can do for you if you build your brand uh, and if you invest more in building your personal brand is working a with a lot more of my ideal clients, right? because I gain exposure, credibility, and trust, access to a global market. So I have clients from over 20 countries now, attracting amazing opportunities, business partners, and clients because people see me online and connect. And then I can sell anything aligned to my brand values, right? And I can launch and promote any new project. So if you have a brand and people know you and you have a following and you have trust, you can launch anything. And I've tried that, right? Different project, my audience will come to me as long as it's valuable to them and relevant to them, right? So you need to be consistent. And most of all, it has personally allowed me to create a lifestyle that I can sell stuff online and I can work from anywhere. It's not about recognition. It's not about being famous. Actually, at some specific time, I was really tired because everyone was recognizing me in Cyprus, everywhere. I was like, I don't want to do any content for Cypriots anymore. I want to hide. I just wanted to hide and wanted to, um, during the pandemic, I was just promoting in the US and other markets, right? So it's not about being famous or being an influencer. It does have its perks a lot of perks, right? For example, getting invited to speak at events like that and get exposure, more exposure for your brand. But your personal brand, your reputation in the market is your biggest competitive advantage. If you ask me personal brand versus business brand, I will say both, but personal brand first. And the number one secret that will get you more clients is branding. And the future of branding is personal because people like to buy from people they know, like, and trust, not from faces organizations, right? And again, you're at this conference, you're connecting with people, not just companies. They buy your values, your knowledge, your personality, your why, your credibility, and your big dream, right? That's what they buy, and that's what you should be communicating. And your unique point of view. So your unique point of view for your industry matters. There is a lot of copycats out there, and that's not the way to win. The way to win is to be you, right? To communicate uh, that unique knowledge and that unique take of you and that unique personality. And you need to first believe in yourself like I had to do. I had to stop hiding behind the scene and, and start putting myself out there. And then I saw, oh, oh, now I attract the right people because now I'm putting my values out there, my personality, and then, what you vibrate, you attract. And then I started attracting the best clients, the best opportunities, the best business partners, more mentors, more everything. And the more I put myself out there, the more I attract. So five key steps to build an influential personal brand that attracts ideal clients and opportunities to you on autopilot. Who would like to learn the five key steps? <laughs> Are you ready? OK, I'm going to uh, keep it short and to the point, but I want to give you like a structure. What, that I followed for me and that I follow for all my clients, and it always, always, always works. So number one is to have a clear purpose, why, and values. We always start with connecting with our purpose, right? So if you are confused, you confuse other people, and brands that stand out lead with purpose. They know their purpose in the market. They know how uh, they want to impact the market positively. And by the way, if you're an entrepreneur, the purpose of your personal brand is aligned to the purpose of your business brand, right? And it could just be, oh, it could be, I want to make people happy, 
you know, <laughs> because of this, a lot of industries we have at this conference. I want to make people happy. That could be your purpose. Because people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. Think of some of the biggest stars, bigger brands that you follow, people that you follow, that you admire, you know their why, you know their purpose, because they consciously communicate it. So they buy your purpose, your why, your values, your vision, and your passion. And this is our guy, Elon Musk. Some of you like him, some of you don't like him, but what's true about him is that he has been building his personal brand. He might be a genius or a crazy nutcase, but the truth is he has been out there speaking at events, being all over the place, communicating his vision, and that's why he became the richest or one of the richest men in the world today because he inspires with his vision. And he says that my driving philosophy is to expand the scope and scale of consciousness that we may, so that we may better understand the nature of the universe. That's his purpose. And he really communicates that. If you notice, every talk, every time you see him online, he communicates why, values, purpose, vision. Why, values, purpose, vision. That's how he sells, right? And being the face of so many companies, raising so much money. And Napoleon Hill, the author of Think and Grow Rich, anyone read Think and Grow Rich? Okay, so he interviewed a lot of successful people of his time to find some common patterns. And one of the main common patterns is that there is one quality which one must possess to win, and that is definiteness of purpose, the knowledge of what one wants, and a burning desire to possess it. Because if you connect with your purpose, you know, I'm, I'm living on purpose now, so I really want to do that. Like, that excites me. And when people see somebody with passion, we want to see people with passion. We get magnetized in every industry. Like, go around this conference and see the most passionate people who talk with passion about what they do. You get magnetized by them. You want to work with them. You want to be around them. So how do you create a clear purpose? By the way, I see a lot of people who don't have a purpose, and they say, I don't know my purpose. So if you don't have a clear purpose and values, you're probably feeling confused, right? And what happens when you're feeling confused and you go out in the market? You confuse other people. You're random. You blend in. You become like everyone else. You become a copycat because you haven't connected with your purpose, so you jump on somebody else's purpose. And then you never stand, really stand out, right? So when you confuse, you lose. And at the very best, you blend in, right? So have you noticed these people that, like you can see that they're not themselves online and they're trying to gain credibility by being similar to somebody else? And then you notice those people that really stand out and they move with purpose. So how to lead with purpose, a few tips. You need to know how you want to impact the world with your work, like what you came here to do as a person and maybe as an entrepreneur, uh, as a professional, how do you want to impact the world? And it doesn't need to be complicated. You need to connect to the why you want to do it. Why do I want to have this outcome? Is it just because uh, I like publicity? If you're just doing it for publicity and likes, again, you're not going to get there, right? You're not going to get there in the long term. You might get some short-term gains but, and, and lights on you, but then it's nothing. It just dies off. And I've, I've seen this for years. I've been in this industry for years. And you need to clarify your goals and vision for what you do and, and communicate that. People connect with that. And really, you have to be willing to be your true, authentic self and let who you are shine, even your vulnerable side, right? You have to do something that you truly believe in and love doing because otherwise, if you, again, if you're just doing it for the money and you don't love it, it just comes out. And you have to clarify your values, what you stand for and even what you stand against. You can't communicate what you stand against. If it's, let's say, quite politically correct and not you know, upsetting people too much. Um, and then step two is to have a clear and strong and consistent brand, message, and image. This is how you show up. Okay, how you communicate. Once you get clear on the inside part, your values, your purpose, your why, your goals, 
create a clear brand message and image because your personal brand is your reputation online and offline and how others perceive you as a professional. And there are certain things you can do to enhance that, right? How you communicate yourself and present yourself online and offline is key to building a personal brand. So how do you create a consistent brand message and image that attracts your ideal clients to you? Number one is you need to know, you need to just write it down now, to do this exercise with yourself, because I think it's very useful to do it even once a year. What is the number one outcome that people get when they work with me? What is the benefit I bring into their life? Like, if they make more money, let's say, okay, so what is the benefit of that money? What is the benefit of the benefit people get? Maybe they get more freedom, maybe they can work from anywhere. So connect to that benefit that people get and that can be your brand message. So I help people do that, right? And then you're clear. And then you need to get clear on what makes you unique. How do you stand out from everyone else? And what are you truly great at? It's all about your unique skills, and you are all born unique. I think you probably we all heard this by now. The possibilities of each one of us being born is like one in like billions, right? So you're here for a reason, and you have a unique DNA. And once you connect to that and start communicating that with confidence, that's when you will stand out, right? You are all unique in here. You just need to connect with it. And again, I've been doing this with clients for years, and I see them shine. So what are your brand colors, style, sounds, and logos? Make sure you're consistent with that as well. I mean, I have a certain style that I love, that it's me. I really enjoy it, right? How I dress, how I communicate myself. And you will see me even at events and everywhere. I have this specific vibe about me. That is me, right? So what is your... Uh, look and style and colors and sounds and, and logos. And again, it doesn't need to be complicated. It can be simple, but make it be you. Even the colors you wear affect how other people perceive you, right? I have made videos about that online. You can find on YouTube, and I'm planning to make more because it's so interesting. Again, a lot of my clients have told me how their results change depending on the color they wear after I teach them the strategies. So now you're wondering, what, is, what does purple mean? <laughs> so, um, and then, this is, yes, this is Elon Musk crying. <laughs> it was so hard. Nobody believed in me. But then, then when you see this kind of videos and you've been through something like that yourself, don't you connect with it? Don't you, like, feel the emotion? And that's when the, the emotional connection happens. Right? So don't be afraid to be vulnerable, to be a little bit more human, to show your human side. Right? People are inspired not by your success, but by how you overcame challenges. Right? So that's a key in building a personal brand, inspiring people. So what is your purpose, why, and values? We talked about that in step one, right? When you determine that, you connect with your, with your brand message, your unique point of view of things in your industry. So uh, is that 30? OK. Uh, what are your three, four main pillars of content? Like how are you going to focus? Like what kind of content are you going to provide? And then be consistent with your image across all platforms and in person, OK? And also, don't overdo it, OK? So a lot of people are trying to be somebody else, and they try to overdo it and to be liked. But even if you're not there yet, share your journey. People are inspired by your journey. You don't need to try to prove that you're somebody that you're not. Be real. People are going to find out it's the internet. You cannot like, fake it till I make it on the internet too much, at least. You know, OK, we have filters. But be real. People connect with that. So what I want to leave you for step number two is that there is no competition to the person who is authentic, really. And that's a very difficult part for many people today to just bring out their authentic self. And knowing your purpose and values, having a unique brand message and image, being authentic and valuing yourself from the inside, because you, to, in order to do that, to 
attract people into your personal brand, you really need to value yourself from the inside and people will pick that up, right? It's key to building an authentic personal brand that truly stands out in the market. Step number three is to create consistent, valuable content. So I said before that we are the media. I was so excited when social media came because I realized like when I used to work in the media, you had to pay so much money to get an ad on TV. I was working for TV channels or to be in a magazine. Uh, I was doing PR, so I was getting free publicity for people, but it was so hard. Now you have, like, you have to pay for almost everything. And then in order to be a TV presenter, there were two things, okay, to get yourself on TV as a presenter. First, you need to follow the line of the TV channel, so it's not you. Second, you had to sleep with somebody. Sorry about this. <laughs> <laughs> At least in some of the TV channels I work with in Cyprus and Greece. Like, so if you didn't want to do that, today people are building brands from their bedroom. During the pandemic, people went from zero to millions of followers from their bedrooms doing YouTube, building their own media group, and they have bigger influence than whole countries. Like Cyprus, my country is 800,000 people. So if you have two million one million followers on YouTube, you have a bigger influence and audience than the president of Cyprus. Can you like, realize how powerful is that? That's why influencers are being silenced today by the platforms. They're becoming way too powerful. And it's not going to stop. It's not going to stop. The platforms are going to shift, but the real strong influencers, the brands, are going to be there. And mostly, they're business influencers. They're not entertainers. They're not like movie stars. They're business influencers and podcasters. So basically, it's all of you. And it's about making that decision. Am I going to be this person? And make that decision today and just start. It's all about just starting like I did. Like I got a really big push from like Gary, let's say, and the Cyprus bank crash. And then I started. So what does... Uh, creating great content due to your brand, to your business. It attracts clients and opportunities to your business on autopilot. Why? Because you create connection through the content. Like re people really connect with you on a deeper level. Recognition, they start recognizing you. You build authority. They start uh, seeing you as the authority in the market. It's your digital footprint online. So when people Google you, like Google yourself. Like what comes up on Google is what you want to come up on Google. And it's beautiful articles about you and podcasts that you're featured on, right? It's not just random stuff. SEO and ranking, so basically you can create content that gets ranked on Google for years and brings you clients for years on autopilot through your content. It's attraction marketing, so you don't really need to be selling. That's my favorite part because I always like hated sales, like being a salesperson. Now I learned to love it because you cannot be an entrepreneur. But I just want to, people to come to me. I don't want to knock on doors, right? And that's the best way to attract your ideal clients without being salesy through content. You build credibility, trust, right? So content, yes, is king and queen. How to create great content? The internet is ruthless. You can't buy likes, not in the short term. Like the platforms are going to find out, the algorithms. And then you're gonna have, they're going to shadow ban you. And then, no. Just build good quality content. It might take a while to get the hang of it, but just start doing it, and then you get better as you go. One of my mentors told me there is no substitute to stage time, which means that like, there's no, like, I can attend as many speaking courses as possible, but if I don't get my ass on stage, I like, can get over my fear and start speaking. I'm not going to be a better speaker, right? So you have to give real value in your industry and just start from somewhere. Know your ideal client really well, connect to their pains, their goals, their challenges, and start creating content for them. Don't create content for you. Create content for that ideal person you want to work with. Okay? And then be consistent and be purposeful with your content. And there were times that I was very consistent, and I made a lot more money, and there were times where I was feeling down, and I was burned out, and I wasn't creating so much content, and then my business was down. Because if you're not consistent, you lose. So find a way. Eventually, we build teams around us. We have a support team so that we can be consistent. We can batch content. I can now film content, and then I have content for three months, for example. I do things like that so that I always have content around. And then I'm, 
you know, you build a team eventually. In the beginning, you can start with your phone, but you build a team that supports you so that you can always have content if you want to take this on the larger scale, right? Be vulnerable, real, authentic, and human. Tell stories. People connect to stories. They understand more through stories. And then choose the platforms that you're going to be on and study them really well, le learn them really well. Every platform is different. So you can take the same content piece and repurpose it, but it's going to be a little bit different format. So you have to like choose the platforms. Eventually, I always recommend being on every platform, like being an omnipresent brand, but start with one too. Like, don't overwhelm yourself. Which platform are your ideal clients on, and which platform do you prefer to play on right now? Right? So, first we create brand clarity, then the content strategy, the type of content we're gonna do. We do our research, we determine our topics, and then we have the, the main content distribution platforms for building a powerful brand. Our, I love YouTube because it's, it's video SEO. Like, you can create one video today, and then this video is going to bring you clients five years from today, even 10 years down the line. Now, when I create videos, I'm thinking, if my niece and nephew watch it in 15 years, 10 years, when they're grown-ups, will they get value? That's what I think when I create videos now. Like, am I, <laughs> do I really want to, this to be on YouTube? Because I know it can stay there. I have videos from six years ago making me lots of money on autopilot while I sleep, just because there is a link under the video. Then we have Instagram, LinkedIn, if you're in, more into B2B. Facebook is still has the biggest audience. TikTok is on a huge rise. I couldn't resist it anymore. I got on a month ago <laughs> on TikTok. And actually, the, the reach is it's crazy how I'm getting followers, how easy I'm getting followers. And then podcasts, again, it's a very long-term strategy. But again, it's, uh, it's a good strategy to get discovered for the long term. Right? But you need to get audience on the other platforms if you want to be a successful podcaster. That's why I put it last. People think they're going to do a podcast and they're going to get discovered and then they give up after 10 podcasts or 50 because nobody's downloading them. So there is a strategy, right? There is a strategy uh, to win on this. Oops, I pressed something I shouldn't have pressed. Okay. So. So the types of content that help you sell are connection, how-to, educational, and offer. And I want to focus on one of these uh, types of content. How-to is teaching people how to do something, right? And this is like one of the top ways to sell. For example, I met some people in gaming now. So there are uh, very big gamers, influencers on YouTube. What are they doing? They're just showing people how to play games. It's a how-to piece of content. Again, I watch my nephews, and he's like, oh, look at this gamer, and he can watch for hours gamers playing. What are these kids getting trained to do? They're getting trained to be buyers of these games, go to their parents, and then when they grow up, you know, they already are, <laughs> you know, the customers of this company. But then connection content, According to a Harvard study, I want to touch a bit on connection content because a lot of you, like most people don't grasp that. And it took me a while to grasp that. Some of my mentors used to say, Bablina, don't just talk about branding. Do all that motivational stuff you do. I do talks on finding your purpose and uh, connecting to your authentic self and knowing your value. And my mentor said, like, do that stuff at the beginning of the seminar if we have like a two-day seminar because then people connect with you and then second day when you talk about your branding stuff, everyone wants to buy and, and it worked, but I didn't know why. Recently, I found a Harvard study that said that, that found out that um, making this type of content actually leads to more money. And this is aspirational, what people aspire to. So when you see people uh, in a big villa or by the beach, which I was doing it just because I live by the beach and I live in this area. So I was doing a lot of videos by, by the beach. Actually, that's what I, I manifested for myself. I'm from Nicosia. So, so people aspire to a certain lifestyle, let's say. So you see a lot of lifestyle influencers getting lots of followers because people want to live that lifestyle. So something that people aspire to do, motivational, something that motivates people to be better, something that inspires people to take action, and something that encourages people. You can do it. Like, you are unique. Just be true and authentic. Don't, don't be fake, right? <laughs> Say something that you believe in. So this type of content that makes people feel good and lifts them up actually leads to more sales. 
So you can all do this kind of content in any kind of industry. Don't be afraid that, oh, I'm out of my brand, right? And the goal of, in your branding is to create a fully connected customer. We talked about connection in the beginning, right? And a fully connected customer is someone who is connected to your brand at an emotional level. And according to this Harvard study, a fully connected customer spends on average twice as much annually as a fully satisfied customer. So, customer satisfaction is not as important as a fully connected customer, right? So, now that we see, we go back to Elon Musk and some of these business influencers making lots of money, they have fully connected customers, if you really look into that. Not just satisfied, like a Tesla might have a lot of faults, really, <laughs> especially the first ones. But these customers are connected to the vision. If anyone wants to get me my dream car, now you know what it is. <laughs> so step number four, and we're getting towards the end, I'm wrapping up, uh, is to build credibility and authority. And in addition to great content, content is first, you can do it from anywhere. Having a great website where uh, you have your products, your services, your content, your credibility. It's like your home on the internet, but it's not the number one thing for most industries. For most industries, right? You can just sell with a landing page. Uh, actually, you, you sell on a landing page. You don't sell on the website. Uh, speaking from stage, so that, that was powerful because that I realized when I put myself on stage as a speaker at my own events, if you can do your own events, it's the best because then you just bring the room is full of people who want to see you, who came for you, not for the conference. But any opportunity you have to speak at events, put yourself on stage, right? That's why I always give this challenge to myself to put myself on stage because it's always something amazing comes out and it gives you authority. You ju can just take the clips, the photos, post them, boom, immediate authority and credibility. Put yourself in the media or on podcasts, YouTube shows, that comes as a side effect of building a brand naturally. So now I have to say no to a lot of things, and I just choose the events, the podcasts I want to be on, and the YouTube shows. I don't go everywhere, right? Uh, but in the beginning, you know, just be open to events in your industry. And then guest blogging. You can guest blog on other platforms. And step number five is to build community. So, talked about the branding, you gain influence, but followers don't equal sales and don't equal community and how you bring in the sales and, and that customer that comes again and again and recommends you to other people is through building community, right? And a really strong personal brand is a brand that actually um, has a business behind it, a real business behind it. How many of you are on TikTok? On TikTok? No? You're gonna be soon, I mean, you're not gonna be able to avoid it like me. So there, there is all this people, influencers with 100K, 200K followers on TikTok, and they still have a job. Like, they're getting follow random followers, just being entertaining, funny, and they have no idea how to monetize that, right? And they still need a job. <laughs> and yeah, eventually, if they're smart, they're gonna start creating a business around it, right? So you need to build community to sell. So how do we build community? What are the main ways? to build community. Uh, so like I said, it's not just being an influencer, like personal brand is being the face of the company, right? But then there is a business behind it. You just represent the values, the message, the vision of the company, and you create the key content. You can have a team helping you. You don't need to create all the content. Like if you have a big company and you don't have time, right? You can just have a team helping you. So the top ways to create community and monetize, live events, meetups, like that has been my top way, right? If you can create your own events, it's the best. It's really a, a great way to connect with customers or attend events. Running webinars is really a powerful way, these online events. That's how I spent the whole pandemic, uh, running my own webinars, being on other people's webinars. Uh, telegram groups, how many of you were hanging out in telegram groups during the pandemic? Raise your hand, <laughs> it was just me. So, Telegram groups are amazing for building community, right? And any kind of community building up and website, they are on the rise. Like a lot of us on this conference, we are on this, on this website now connecting with each other. And then a funnel, a landing page designed to get people off social media 
off the internet into your mailing list, and then you start building community with the people who subscribe to your mailing list, is not a good idea to depend on the platforms, really, because the platforms change all the time, algorithms change, so you need to have a way to bring people into your list, create that community, right? So these are the top ways, and of course, doing one-to-one -one consultations is not so scalable, but if you have a team, it is. So, the five ways, just a summary, uh, before we, we wrap it up, the five ways to build an influential personal brand start with purpose. Know your purpose, your why, and your values. Be a purpose-led brand. Clear, strong, and consistent brand image and message. Um, consistent, valuable content. Build credibility and authority, and then build community. Three predictions I want to leave you with, right? And I've I've always been on point with my predictions even 10 years ago. Many people on this island, they, they made fun of me many times on predictions I made, right? And if you have experience, you can see things. Um, and they are all coming true. So in the next 10 years, personal brands that are able to stand out will be more influential than business brands. And business brands either will pay influencer or as a business owner, go and become the influencer. You can be the influencer because you actually is, is the best rather than play, paying influencers to speak on your behalf because you represent your values. Personal brands will replace the media and become the media groups, and they will be so powerful, uh, more influential than local media and politicians. So I give you an example. And then one of the biggest assets, and you have to think about that really, really well, uh, that you will have in this new economy is to be flexible as to where you live, where you work from, and being able to make money online. And if you need to have a business at a certain place, you can have a team, but flexibility will be so important in the next few years, and building a personal brand, monetizing a personal brand, is one of the ways to make money online and be able to live from anywhere and have a global audience and clients from around the world, depending on the language you speak. And make sure you play the long game, right? And then you will win for sure, in the short and the long term people will see that you're a valuable brand. So the key takeaway I want to leave you with today, the future of branding is personal. That's what I believe. Uh, that's what I have, have experienced. And the most valuable currencies today are attention, connection, and trust. And building a strong and valuable personal brand will be one of the biggest competitive advantages, if not the number one competitive advantage you will have in your industry. Just take the action, try it, come back to me, one, two, three, five years later and tell me what happened, and you will see if the benefits are so, so many. But you need to take the plunge. You need to trust yourself and take the plunge. So this is what I do. I do business consulting for brand building, uh, personal and business brand building. I have the Branding and Influence Academy that I've been running for the past six years. Uh, I have a digital course creator program and bootcamp for people who want to be digital course creators. Uh, for those of you who might want to work with me, just connect with me online and then you can, you know, can get access to everything I'm doing. I'm planning some branding and wellness retreats. For I, my audience is mostly business owner or people who want to make a transition and some top level executives as well, right? Who are, you know, at the top of their industry and they're building that brand, they're intrapreneurs. Because when you build a personal brand, you really, you don't, you cannot be an employee anymore. There's so many opportunities that come to you. So you can find me on many platforms, but if you want to message me, if you have a question, if you want to get access to my, I have a masterclass on branding coming up, DM me brand with your question. If you have a question on anything I'm doing, if you need help from me, or you can even go book a consultation in my calendar at pavlinababaluka.com slash brand. It's going to be with me for those of you who are here. Uh, and yeah, please connect with me, say hi. And like I said, if you want, if you have a question, if you want to get access to any of my courses or a consultation, DM me brand, right? Or just book a consultation. These are my social media, uh, Pavlina Babaluka. And yeah, I hope to connect with you there and uh, get to know you better. And I hope you implement. I'm going to take questions if anyone has questions. Thank you. Mm -hmm.